Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Anthony with VR365 and VR Roundtable. Yes, we are doing a special cross episode today. Uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulties before we got started here, and I'm not seeing anybody in chat yet, but hopefully that will be coming up soon. I'll probably have to resize chat a little bit here. But basically, we're gonna do an episode well, basically what happened was Chris and Gary were unable to make the normal VR Roundtable episode this week, and we weren't going to have a VR Roundtable episode at all, but I was talking with Steve, and I was like, you know what, there's some pretty good news and stuff, there's some interesting things that are going on, so I thought, why not bring Steve on VR365, and I was saying, hey, we could do a cross VR Roundtable episode where we kind of uh, do both. And so this episode is being recorded on the VR365 channel, but it will end up on VR Roundtable as well. And so we do have a couple of people coming in to chat. Like I said, we did have some technical difficulties. Everything was absolutely perfect last night when we tested it, but uh, now we're getting going. Okay, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. These technical difficulties bother me. Uh, it's it's kind of not in my DNA to have technical difficulties, so uh, don't don't like it. But um, we can blame Microsoft for it. As always, it's Microsoft's fault. They just like to change things and let uh, the users of their stuff just figure it out and deal with it on their own. And um, that's kind of crap. But uh, I think we're through it. So uh, let's let's move forward and have a good show. Yeah, you can blame me for the technical difficulties. They follow me everywhere, let me tell you. Um, okay, so chat might be a little bit off, but we can we can worry about that later. Okay, so anyways, on today's show, what I thought we could do is um, go over some of the news that's happened this week, like some of the biggest stories of the week, and kind of get your take on it, Steve. I've covered pretty much this stuff every day. You know, Monday through Sunday, I'm doing a show here. And I cover things on a daily basis, but on VR Roundtable, it's kind of a weekly roundup. So I thought we could kind of go over some of the biggest stories. So going back to Monday, uh, the biggest story that I have on Monday is there was an, a Lenovo deal, $180 for a Lenovo headset, you know, the, the mixed reality headset at Walmart, $180. And the great thing about this is this wasn't refurbished. You know, this is a brand new headset. Now, it's probably not going on anymore, but did you happen to see this on Monday? And what do you think about some of these unbelievable prices that you can get on some of these Windows Mixed Reality headsets? I have a torn opinion on it, really. Like, I think the, the low price is awesome. And I think a lot of people that, um, you know, that already have VR, like a Rift or a Vive, I think they will appreciate the... Um, the LCD, it, it's kind of like using an Oculus Go, the increased resolution. Um, the, the screens look real nice, although the blacks aren't the highest quality. Uh, but the price is good, and for those that don't have VR, it's a way to step into it. Um, but I'm not as sold on the whole Windows MR platform itself. Like, it's just got a little more jank to it. Like, I, I don't know, and I'm sure some people that love their Windows MR head units or headsets are going to, like, tell me it doesn't have jank. But... Um, I experience jank on it, so uh, I don't like the platform as much as I do uh, Vive or uh, the Rift, uh, the platforms of their use. So, um, but still, the price is good. Price is good, and hopefully, more people pick it up. Yeah, I, honestly, I would have grabbed one myself. One of the problems that I have on the whole Windows Mixed Reality front, and I, I've mentioned this a number of times, is I'm I'm still using an incredibly ancient CPU. And Windows Mixed Reality does require some instruction sets that my CPU doesn't have. And so I'm kind of boned there. Like if I went ahead and bought one, I wouldn't be able to do anything with it right away uh, until I upgraded my CPU. But man, you see that $180 price. It is incredibly tempting. Um, okay, so moving on to Tuesday. And some of the biggest things that we had going on on Tuesday is the release of Daracene. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that hit PlayStation VR. It's probably one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest games of November. I'd have to say, at least before we had all these other games coming out of the woodwork. What was your thoughts on Daracene? Is this kind of a game that you were okay with uh, basically skipping? 
Uh, you know, yes and no. I, I'm in a position, and when you're in the same position, you, you want to try everything, and you feel like you uh, uh, are somehow responsible and should speak to every game that comes out, or at least every game of note. So um, the problem is, is that it, it seems to be a very polarizing game. You know, I checked out a lot of the reviews, and uh, some people either, you know, liked it and thought it was solid, other reviewers thought that it was pretty pretty bad um and and the problem for us is that it's a 39 dollar i think you know it's it's, it's i think it's, it's 29 i think yeah, it's 20. 29 39 whatever it's like it's in that that asking price that makes it hard to uh roll the dice especially when i have a big backlog of games and and other things i'm checking out so i didn't feel real motivated to to jump in into it and spend the money uh i would like to check it out and and um i'm very interested in in what from does because from uh i really like the dark souls i didn't really like demon souls as much um but that was a different time for me uh but dark souls and, and then bloodborne i really really dig bloodborne and um i heard that that there was a um sort of maybe a teaser in in Deracine that um suggested that it might have taken place in a, in, a, in a time before bloodborne uh like it's a prequel era or something so um i i'm very interested but it just something's not pushing me saying hey run out buy it and and sit down and play it yeah yeah and um you know one of the things i did hear about it though is like you remember playing lone echo and you would have that relationship with uh, <laughs> I am Rut says can't get enough of first contact. Keep that trailer rolling. I was actually trying to tra uh, change the trailer there, but I was having a little problem. I'll wait a minute for that. But one of the things I I heard about Darasine is similar, and and who knows how we're supposed to pronounce this, but similar to Lone Echo, you have this interpersonal relationship with some of these characters at a certain point in the game. And at least that's what I heard when I was uh, reading the the review by Upload VR is that it's kind of a hard game to get into, but there is there is something there with that interpersonal relationship with the characters. But it's kind of set in this weird era. They're, they talk differently. So you gotta got you gotta buy into that whole thing, you know, the whole experience. Yeah, and, and and again, I think like so. What I've seen of it, the game looks like it's very, and I don't even have a trailer or anything playing on on VR roundtables in here either. But it's it's a very uh, slow. Like you, you interact with some things, and it's it's not exciting. It, it's you you want to take it slow. You want to just kind of enjoy the ambiance, and um, and you know, I, I think it's typically my bag. Like I, I'm, I'm more about a polished game that, that has good ambiance and all that, but there's something about this one just isn't, is not making me want to jump into it a whole lot? Like I, again, I want to play it, but I'm just, I'm not like, Ooh, I can't wait to get off this call so I can go play Deracine. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not like that. And, and I kind of, <laughs> uh, I want it to be like that, you know? Yeah. Okay. And then um, some other stuff that we heard on Tuesday, Unseen Diplomacy has been announced. Now, not much information on it. The only thing we really got actually was basically like the Steam logo for Unseen Diplomacy. No other information. We have no idea when this is coming out. Now, this developer, Triangular Triangular Pixels, I believe, is, is the developer, right? Um, they made the original Unseen Diplomacy. Then they made this PlayStation-exclusive Smash Hit Plunder. And that game, as far as I know, it fell pretty flat. Now, I know that it was... It was on the uh, the UK PlayStation Store for like thirty pounds or or something pretty crazy or maybe the equivalent of like thirty American dollars, which I thought was really high for Smash Hit Plunder. I played it a little bit; it's okay. But now we found out about Unseen Diplomacy too. I'm excited about this. Hey, I know you got this TP Cast. Did you ever try Unseen Diplomacy with your wireless TP Cast? Kept forgetting to. I think. <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to, and I uh, just, you know, I keep I keep forgetting to, in part because I didn't, I don't, I don't think Unseen Diplomacy is particularly good. Like, it's a neat little demonstration of, of how you can use a room scale space and, and you know, kind of twist and turn through that space to, to convince yourself that you're, you know, you're in a much bigger space, a much bigger place. Um, and, and that is cool, but it doesn't necessarily make it enjoyable. Like for me, that was cool in 
summer of 2016. It's it's not cool anymore. And um, it, it's just just my opinion. So no one you know put the pitchforks away for now. But uh, you know I'm of a mind like I'm I want I want to get past the tricks and I want to get past the tech demos and. Um, we don't really know much about Unseen Diplomacy 2 in that regard. Is it going to be a more fully featured game? Are they going to enable thumbstick locomotion in, in Unseen Diplomacy 2? Because, you know, um, in case, I don't know if we're going to talk about it, but uh, this, the, the results, maybe it was last week, but, you know, room scale is dead, you know? <laughs> like, uh, you know, not very many Rift owners have a three camera or more uh, sensor setup. So I, I don't, I don't, particularly believe that large room scale games and and i mean room scale in the true sense of room scale not stand in the middle of a play space with 3d tracking or three 360 degree tracking um i, I mean walk around games like unseen diplomacy games like uh, a chair in the room um that initially it, it got a patch recently that lets you um you know locomote with your touchpad or your your thumbstick but originally that game you had to have a certain size play space and um you know you walked around in that play space natively and um you know i think that is pretty much dead uh maybe i'll pull a sebastian and say room scale is dead um you know how, how he did with no, uh, declaring no, it's gotta Rift live. <laughs> i think it's but dead. you know what steve <laughs> I bet you your kids would really like unseen, like just crawling around on the ground, you know, because you, you, you crawl through those little tunnels right on the ground. And I'm sure your kids would would enjoy that. Like I always thought when I was playing that in Unseen Diplomacy and it's a tech demo, it's not a game, but, you know, it's a tech demo, but it kind of shows you how you can you can redirect people and put them in these really small spaces and have a door over here and a door over there. And it makes you feel like you're in a much bigger area. It's just kind of tricking you. But when I was crawling around in those crawl spaces, I couldn't help but think, imagine if I was doing this with a freaking alien chasing me at the same time. Like, imagine if alien isolation and unseen diplomacy had a baby. That would be kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. See, we'll that's it. That's, no, that's a, that's a good idea. Like, like, when I say that I think... Um, well, I do think room scale is dead because I don't think that there's going to be for any time, you know, maybe if we want to talk theoretically about something 20 years from now, but anytime in the relative new, near future, say from now to five years from now, I don't think that there's going to be any developer that sits and says, hey, we want to make Alien Isolation 2. Uh, we want to give it VR support and we want it to be a full room scale game that plays like Unseen Diplomacy. I, I'd agree to an extent that would be cool, but I don't see someone actually giving it serious chops to make it a, fa a like a really good game that leverages that technology because they're just going to look at it and say, well, VR is a niche. The amount of people that actually could do room scale this size is a, even more niche within a giant niche and I, I just I don't see that being a decision that anyone makes and and that's kind of what I mean when I say room scale is dead like not that it wouldn't be cool to like play an amazing game that 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 did all these things I just don't think we're ever going to get it at least not in any sort of relative near terms that makes it almost even worth talking about you know I what I was thinking though is like if they're if we got to the point where we're making arcade location based entertainment arcade games, right? And let's say they were they were made with a certain scale where this is an arcade experience, but if you happen to be a home owner that has a really huge space, maybe you could actually get this like room scale arcade experience and like if you had a a really huge room, it, but it would be such a tiny niche of a niche. It wouldn't even be worth it. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on. I think those things are going to exist for the location based stuff. Like, you know, the, um, drawing a blank on the name of the, but you know, all those location based entertainment companies that, that have VR experiences, like the sort of thing it will exist for them, but I, I don't think we're going to get mainstream with it. Yeah. The void and IMAX and all of that. But like if they had, if they had a version of it where if you had crazy space at home, sure, you can go ahead and and buy this version as well. That would be kind of cool, but so few people would have it. Okay, another thing I have on Tuesday is Titan Slayer 2. I have that running on my trailer over here. Um, it came out, and it's 30 bucks. I was a little bit surprised by that. Any interest whatsoever on Titan Slayer 2? Did you play Titan Slayer 1 at all or try the demo or anything? 
Didn't play it. Uh, didn't play the first one. Didn't play the second one. Uh, it doesn't seem to have gotten too much attention, so it's not really on my radar. Okay. And then, so we can go ahead and move on to Wednesday. Uh, what was going on on Wednesday? And I'm just throwing up a Polybius trailer on the screen right now. And we found out about Polybius is finally heading to PC VR. And the funny thing is, is when we first heard about this, like when the information first broke, it seemed as though this was going to be an Oculus Rift exclusive, but available only on Steam. So it's like you buy it on Steam, but it's only available for the Oculus Rift. But we found out later that that's actually just an accident. Llama Soft, when they were making their Steam page, I guess somehow they got it they got it worked out on there where it says requires an Oculus Rift headset, but apparently this is going to be for Vive and regular PC VR players, maybe Windows Mixed Reality and stuff like that. Steve, I believe you've tried Polybius at some point, right, on PlayStation VR. It's definitely a retro kind of a thing, but what's your thoughts on this finally coming to PC VR? I remember seeing, is it's Jeff Minter, right? That's the guy. He, um... It, it, somewhere there was a post that said they still haven't made money on it. I, re I remember I, I heard that somewhere this week. It said like it's the game to this day, what a year later or whatever, hasn't made any money. So um, I think you know it, it's good to for them to go out and try and, and get it up, get it more access to to um, you know everyone with Steam VR and, and Rift Vive, Windows MR, whatever. But I don't think that it's going to really catch too much attention like to me the game was interesting but it was just kind of it was one of those play it for 30 minutes and you're just kind of done with it like you know it's a one time and and everyone uh listening to this and everyone in chat has played uh vr games that were really cool and and they were great for 30 minutes to an hour but then for whatever reasons you're not really compelled the next day to turn it back on again and i think um I just I think Polybius kind of falls in in that uh, in that camp. OK, and then a, a few other things we heard about on Wednesday, the Fallout 4 code. So if you signed up with Viveport now, the thing is, you have to you'd have to sign up, I think, for three months of Viveport to get this. And it was like tw I think it was 20 bucks if you signed up for three months of Viveport, you would get a code for Fallout 4 VR. Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, Fallout 4 is one of the best games you can play in VR. Um, it's one of the biggest value games that you can get in VR in terms of hours per dollar spent. You know, it's the exact opposite of most VR games. You know, that's pretty typical in the Bethesda cycle anyway. They make these long running games. Um, I will say that it will require a lot of effort to get it dialed in. And, and, you know, if you're running on a GTX 960 or 1050, um, you know, you maybe need to consider playing it. But other than that, for 20 bucks, it's worth picking up. If you don't have it, like get it, it's, it's worth having in your library. And it's nice to have that game there as a fallback, you know, that you can kind of play between all of the other games that, that you want to get to. Um, you know, I just beat it and what, about a month ago and it came out last December. So it was, it was my go-to game between reviewing other games and stuff. And I liked having that fallback and, and now I'm going to be doing the same thing with Skyrim probably. Okay. Uh, let me resize my trailer real quick here. Okay. The, the next little tiny little thing I have is angry birds. Um, right now I have a little angry birds, magic leap trailer running on the screen. But one of the things we found out on Wednesday is Angry Birds VR Arcade. And when this first got discovered, it was found on like a Facebook page or something. So everybody thought, oh, Angry Birds is coming to the Oculus Rift. Um, maybe it's like a, an Angry Birds VR Oculus Rift exclusive. And then we found out, no, it's actually the Facebook page for an arcade company that uses only HTC Vibes for their arcade. And so it appears that Angry Birds is coming to VR arcades. Any excitement with that one? <laughs> um, a little bit, like um, not too much. It's it, it, it's Angry Birds. Like I'm kind of through with these mobile uh, games, you know, like, like just it. If if it's a way that I and I'm in a spot where I can check it out, then then yeah, I'll check it out. But otherwise, no. Like like, what do you think? Are you excited for Angry Birds in VR? 
Not really. I mean, I've seen, you know, the Magic Leap one is kind of cool because it is using your backgrounds and everything. And uh, I don't know, it, I, it, it could be fun. I hope it would be very inexpensive, like a seven ninety nine kind of a game or nine ninety nine or something like that. Like, uh, what is the game with the fruits? Uh, Fruit Ninja VR, right? Like, like a game like that, I can get into one of those games, but the price needs to be bite sized, in my opinion. Like, I, I could, I could get into a lot of those games if they keep the price really small, and so you can just grab it. It's not that much money. You screw around with it for a while. Your kids might like it, type of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, about to end the Wednesday discussion, but before we get to Thursday, did you ever try this thing called Dinner Party? It was the Betty and Barney Hill thing that was in this thing called Within. It's like a 360 video thing. Probably not. Okay. No, I, I just I wanted to. I don't really get into the 360 videos because they're generally all crap. Like they, <laughs> it's, it's 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 not a pleasurable experience. Yeah, and this one was kind of crappy as well. I, I was hoping they kind of, some of them, they'll mix like 360 video with like pre-rendered backdrops and stuff. Like they'll kind of mix and match it. And some of those can be kind of cool. And when I saw the trailer, I thought it was like that, but it really wasn't like that. Okay, so let's move on to Thursday. Thursday, the big news, well, one of the big pieces of news on Thursday, a date, a launch date for Beat Saber, PlayStation VR, baby. We've been waiting for this forever. I'm sure you've seen it on many of my shows, Steve, saying this has to be ready prior to Thanksgiving because I, I'm hoping that people will take um, their PlayStation VRs to Thanksgiving, you know, and, and fire up Beat Saber and get the whole Thanksgiving Day crowd playing Beat Saber and kind of spread that good joy. What do you think about November 20th? I think it's uh, good and it's in time. Like the, um, the I, I've, I've said the same thing and I don't know if I, I got it from you or, or, or we've said it um, in the past, but yes, that is a game that needs to be ready for Turkey Day. And I am very happy that the PlayStation VR owners will have a chance to play Beat Saber. Beat Saber is the perfect game, I think, to to show people who don't have VR. It's a perfect game because it it's 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 fun. Uh, it shows off the the advantages of VR. Well, it shows that hey, this is this is what you can't do with a gamepad and and do on your Xbox One. Um, it, it it shows it's it's accessible by everybody that can stand and and that has two arms. Like um, it, it doesn't matter if you're eight years old or if you're sixty years old, you can play Beat Saber and have fun with it. So I think it's a good game for the industry. Uh, I think it's good that it's coming to PlayStation VR. I think it's great that it's coming to PlayStation VR in time to showcase to more people. And I think it makes PlayStation VR along with all the other things, um, you know, in including the back catalog, I think it gives them a very impressive holiday run up, even though there isn't one, you know, November game that that is is like Resident Evil 7 big or Fallout or Skyrim big. Um, it's it's the collection of what they do have, Astrobot and all that, I think gives them a, a good solid lineup. Gary's in chat. And when I said, yeah, uh, Beat Saber coming to PSVR, he's like, yes, can't wait. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of hoping they would have a little demo too because then if they had a you know if they had a demo for just one song then there then everybody could show it off where if you got to buy it then you know you have to buy the game um but yeah so we'll have to see what happens with that um let's Hold see on, do okay. you think so there was some controversy with that that in that the um the game is coming with uh, I'd have to read more about five like, extra songs. I well, that, but then they call it a campaign too. Like, yeah. I don't know what that means exactly. I have to read more about it, but, but in either case, there was the controversy. A lot of PC VR beat saber owners, um, and to a degree, I understand were upset because PlayStation is getting some exclusive content and modes, uh, when the, the PC version of the game is still in early access. Um, and to me, that game shouldn't even be in early access. They should have just released it as is and, and, and done anything future as DLC. But in either case, um, do you think that any of the PC VR people were were um, sort of right in, in, in sort of being a little pissed off that, that you know, PlayStation VR Beat Saber is getting some content that they're not getting? Um, since initially Beat has come out, Beat Games has come out and said, hey, this new campaign mode and practice mode um, is going to come to... Uh, PC VR in a in a 
relatively soon update, but then the extra of the five extra songs would be a little further down the road. Do you think that there's anything worth being upset about if you're a huge PC uh, Beat Saber fan like Gary? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think... I mean, here's my thought process on that. I mean, technically, yeah, you can kind of be a little bit pissed off and say, hey, you're doing all this stuff for PlayStation VR. Take care of what you already got first. I, I understand that argument. But in the case of Beat Saber, the PC VR version is butter smooth. It's polished. It, it works great. This is a little bit different than I, I can give you an example. OK, there is this company called uh, Sin Studio that has a number of VR games and they brought a bunch of them to PlayStation VR and they have, they have a bunch that's on uh, PC VR. And I'm trying to think of what are the names of some of the games that they have, but it's, it's S I N N studio. They have a game called the Wraith, right? Mm -hmm. Which is on PC VR. And apparently if I'm remember correctly, or it might've been one of their other games, it has like major performance issue problems and then here the here the the developer is making a PlayStation VR version now in that and and you know trying to hype up the PlayStation VR version and doing an AMA on on the PSVR subreddit and stuff like that in that kind of a scenario yeah i kind of have a problem with that because if you have a problem with your PC VR version where it's not even running right then yeah, you probably shouldn't be moonlighting on the PSVR. But in the case of Beat Saber, like the game runs flawlessly. It, it works very well. I understand they want all that extra content as well. But I think, you know, patience is a virtue, right? It's eventually going to come, you know? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one, one other thing, PD says, um, two days after P PSVR launch, the, beat, the PC Beat Saber community will have already modded the new songs. There is nothing to complain about. And uh, PD buddy, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you there, because even though someone may do that and, and I do expect them to take a stab at it, unless they go through and they have the PlayStation version side by side and, and, and are somehow able to copy the beat map one to one. Most of the PC VR modded songs I play are trash. And and it's because. It's 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 because the community is trying to turn it into an esport. Like it, it it's all expert and expert plus, and it's not very fun because they're just making it hard for the sake of being hard. Um, there are a couple good modded songs where someone seems to know what they're doing. Um, so even though, to your point, even though someone will take and rip the audio and create a PC version of these five new uh, Beat Saber tracks, I don't think they're going to be any good. Um, and that's just kind of the way I'm like, cause it's just going to be expert, expert plus trash. And not that I can't play, I can play on expert and expert plus, but it's just, it's, it doesn't mean it's fun. And, um, that's why I'm not really big on the modded community at, to this point. There's a few good tracks. I'm not saying there's none, uh, but, but most of them I'm not enjoying. Like I am the, uh, 10 native tracks. Okay. Um, another big news story that we had, I believe this is a Thursday that I'm talking about is Oculus Rift. Uh, the price dropped to 350 bucks on Amazon and Best Buy, and this is kind of leading up to Black Friday, I guess. So it's probably going to stay this price for a couple of weeks, I'm, I'm imagining. Um, do you believe this $50 drop is enough to kind of move the needle at all, or is it just going to get those fence sitters that were probably about to buy it anyway, and this just gives them that extra push? What's your thoughts? Um, your audio broke up for me for a second. What product are oh. we talking about? That's fifty bucks off. Oh, uh, the Oculus Rift dropped oh, to three fifty. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, obviously lower prices are good. Um, the Rift has been three fifty several times. It was three fifty a couple months ago with the um, the uh, Marvel United Powers bundle. Um, so yeah, I'm all for lower prices, lower barriers, get more people to buy it. Hopefully, um, I want to see them actually push it one step further and, uh, take it to two ninety nine. Um, you know, let, let's, let's push harder because, um, you know, that's, that's what, what we should be aiming for. So, uh, good news. Uh, speaking of Oculus Rift, I want to give a little small shout out to Oculus support. My, uh, Rift a couple weeks ago developed the left audio issue where the headphone stops working, uh, due to the flex cable on the inside and I fixed it by you know adding a little wire and um, there's information out there how to do that uh, but my concern is that I was once that flex cable was torn 
that um, it was going to continue to stretch and, and tear more and more that it would eventually turn off the LEDs in the back for tracking. Uh, so I got with Oculus support. I'm out of warranty. I've had my Rift for well over a year and said, look, you know, this is a common issue. And, you know, um, we got to stand by this. And um, they did. They they sent me a new Rift, not a brand new Rift. It, it comes from their, their service center, um, which coincidentally turns out to be in Louisville. So um, <laughs> I sent them my Rift on Wednesday and got it back on Friday and got the other one back on Friday. When I saw the address from the UPS prepaid label, I was like, man, I can just go drop this off. It's like five minutes. <laughs> um, but then I didn't because, you know, I was worried about having a, a tracking history showing that I actually did mail the thing to them and all that. But um, yeah, they stood by it. So just a little shout out to Oculus support. And if you haven't had that issue yet, uh, be prepared. You're probably going to have the issue. Uh, and if you don't let a lot of people play with your Rift, if you're really the only user, you can put some tape on it to stop that stretching. Um so just a little public service announcement. Yeah. Me, you know, me and Paradise have both been having a problem with uh, doing snap turning in a couple of different games where on our right controllers, we can only snap turn to the right and it's very hard to snap turn to the left. We noticed this in Witching Tower VR and we also noticed it in Transpose. And I don't know if that was just those games, if it's some kind of software thing or if maybe our controllers are about to have a problem. But yeah, that's one of the things to concern ourselves with. Um, okay, let's see. What else did I want to mention here? Well, you know what? I On on the VR365 screen, I have 10 hearts, this trailer running. And I believe you had a chance to play this. What was, what was your thoughts on 10 hearts? Looks like a pretty good lemming style game. Yeah, it, it was. Um, it, it, it's real cute. It, you know, I don't know if I want to lay out the whole game, but but basically it's a lemming style game. You gotta you open a box and the little toy soldiers they they need to go from point A to point B, and you manipulate the environment, their path, which is usually with these little various shaped blocks and 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 such. Um, it's it's well executed. Um, it's it it, it um, is fun. It's cute. It, it, there's really not a lot of bad things to say about it. Other than it's a lemming style game and you have to want to play that. And, and that's kind of where I'm at. I'm sitting here and I'm playing this game. And like, I can't say anything bad about this game. It's better than I thought it would be. Um, it's it, the, the polished executions right on point. There's there's really nothing that I can ding it. Um, but I just don't really like, like those kinds of games, though. So I'm not real compelled to go back in and play it. But if you like those kinds of games, like without question, I can wholeheartedly recommend it. Like there's there's really nothing bad to say about it um, because I thought the execution and, and everything was pretty spot on. Honestly, I'm kind of amazed. Like when I saw the price of it, 20 bucks, because it has a lot of polish, man. It like, again, the same thing for me. This is not my style of game. Like when I'm thinking of the genres that I'm into, like Lemmings is way the hell down there. Um, but it's a great quality game. I mean, the visuals are good. The sound effects are good. And then also like when I was first in it at the very beginning, you start off at that one table and I kind of thought it was just going to be that, like they would just put you at these different tables, but you have, teleportation you know you got these bigger rooms you're going over to different parts of the rooms grabbing this and it almost becomes i didn't get super far into it but it seems like it can become one of these very hectic games where you're like teleporting over here grabbing this block coming back to, you know putting the block here oh no now the little soldiers are going over there i gotta grab the block get over here put this block here you know kind of like one of those hectic things but i was surprised by the price um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to Friday. And so the big news on Friday, well, actually, there was a couple of interesting news things that popped off on Friday, but Winlands 2 is coming to Steam on November 15th. This is pretty big news because when Winlands 2 first hit the Oculus Rift as an exclusive, at that time, uh, I think we had heard that it wasn't going to hit any place else until possibly like January. And here it is. Winlands 2 is hitting in a matter of days. This next week it comes out. Um, I know that you've enjoyed Winlands 2, right, on your Oculus Rift. Do you feel like now that it's, now that it's coming over 
to Steam and, and Vibe players can grab it natively. But of course, we do have the political issues that go on with this. So some people, uh, they kind of want to penalize these developers for taking that sweet Oculus Nectar. What's your thoughts on that? That's not really my thing. Like, like Windlands 2 is a good game. You should have Windlands 2. If you're a fan of VR, it is a good game that you're probably going to enjoy. Most people are going to enjoy Windlands 2. I am not a fan of begrudging uh, a business that that does what they need to do to make their financials solve it. Like, you know, we, we, we you got so many in the community that sit there and say, well, exclusives hurt. VR. I, I don't think they do when you consider the business ramifications and the financial outlay that these companies have to put out and the risk that they're taking. If if VR was to get as big as you know PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Tomb Raider, and, you know all these mainstream gaming, if they get that big, then you can make the arc argument that exclusives may hurt more than they help. But in in a realm of of someone taking upfront money when the game may not be made at all without it because we're not talking about exclusives stopping some people from buying it we're talking exclusives that no one would get to play it the game may not exist at all um i don't i don't see how you could be a fan of vr and want it to succeed and and be mad at that um so i don't begrudge any developer that does what they need to do for their business so that they can keep making content. That's the biggest problem that VR has right now, in my opinion. We can talk about field of view. We can talk about resolution, comfort, wireless, yada, yada, yada. The biggest issue stopping people from taking and buying VR in mass, the number one issue, not that those other things aren't issues, but the number one issue is content. Fallout, Skyrim, and Resident Evil 7 are only going to go so far. Uh, these ports, as much as I love them, Borderlands 2 might be awesome. It's only going to go so far. So when a developer makes a good game and they have to, I don't care whose money they have to take, rather they can take Mark Cuban's money and, and, and make the game exclusive to the, to the Dallas Mavericks for a month. I, I don't <laughs> care. Like, like do what you can to keep making content. That content is what we need. We need developers to get experience and we need games to keep coming out. So, um, if you're one of those people that begrudge, um, uh, the developers of Winland SciTech, is that, is that who it is? Um, um, if yeah. you're one of the develop people that that begrudge them for what they did um, and won't buy their game, you are harming VR more than you think you're helping it for sure. Um, now that the game's coming to Steam, go buy it. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think part of the whole thing is like it's like when the Rift, when the Rift and the Vive first came out, it really was like two separate camps of people. You know, way back in in April and like late March and April of 2016, you really did have these two camps. And I was actually in the Vive camp. I was on the Vive subreddit. And, and I remember the Oculus people and, you know, the Oculus people would come in and, and they would cause havoc on the Vive subreddit and Vive people would cause havoc over there. And, and it really got into this us versus them thing. And, and I think a lot of people, they held on to that over these years, you know, over all these years, they've held on to that. And so anytime you have these exclusives, people tend to try to penalize them, which, yeah, I, I, I've always said, look, unless you've got a major stock investment in any of these companies, just in, we're in level consumers. It's the other, other complaint, uh, the other complaint I say, we're in level consumers. This is not our, our fight. You know what I mean? We're, we're just here to enjoy the content. Let's not worry about the, the, contracts that are signed and all of that you know let's just enjoy this stuff okay um another big story quick, that though, I, one thing okay. um conrad lawrence in chat says the winlands developer also threatened legal action against a youtuber who was teaching vr development i am not aware of that situation um but assuming that it's true um i i wouldn't condone that just because i'm not going to think that they did wrong taking oculus money to have a, a an exclusive uh timed exclusive um they shouldn't be harming and unless there was some divulsion of of uh intellectual property or, or something like that um i, I don't want to say that that i stand behind every single thing SciTech has ever done and ever will do um but just that one particular issue so i, I wanted to clarify that no, you're their legal counsel, Steve. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you're responsible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, no, speaking to what Conrad Lawrence is talking about, like 
sometimes things like this will pop up in chat and I can't really comment on it because I don't know about it. So it's like, okay, that's interesting, but I'd have to really know the insides of it. But, you know, a news story that did hit, I believe this was Friday, is Shadow VR. So did you see this? Like when this first hit, a lot of people thought, oh, this is a new HTC Vive product. This new standalone, it's called Shadow VR. It's 300, I guess it's actually supposed to be available today. Today is November 11th. It's supposed to be available worldwide on November 11th for $399. And it's true, six degrees of freedom on your head, six degrees of freedom in your hands with PlayStation Move looking style controllers that are tracked via ray tracing, which I don't know how, how that works. But um, but what we did find out is actually this is not like a HTC Vive product. What it is, it's a it's a Chinese company called Shadow Creator, and they've licensed Vive Wave, the Vive Wave platform. And so Vive Port is going to be on the Shadow VR headsets, and it does have a Snapdragon 835, just like the Oculus Quest. So conceivably. Somebody could design an Oculus Quest game and be able to port it to Shadow VR at some point in time. But the big hype when this first hit was, hey, why wait another eight or nine months for the Quest when you can get Shadow VR right now? <laughs> what, did you hear about this? What did you think about Shadow VR? I, I looked at it loosely. Like I, I didn't, you know, as as anyone that's watched VR Roundtable or listened to VR Roundtable knows, I'm the resident mobile hater. <laughs> Um, I don't like, I, I, I just, I, I'm not so convinced that mobile is going to be a product for me. Um, so with that reduced enthusiasm, um, uh, my enthusiasm and tracking the news and, and really diving into uh, a new product is, is subdued compared to something that I'm excited about. Um, so it, the, the price is good. You know, it, this may be, this may be a good way for, for, uh, a community to thrive with this product. Um, I still think the quest is going to be better. I think the quest is going to be better supported, um, at least here in the West, um, and in Western Europe. I don't think that this shadow product is, is going to really be a serious contender in, in that way. We, we, we tend to focus so much on hardware and say, okay, the, they both check these boxes and, you know, same Snapdragon 835, same this, same that. Um, but in reality, the, the support and the marketing, uh, and all that stuff really is what carries a product, you know, more. And, and that's why you may have such a huge difference between the quest and, and, and this, this, um, this unit. So, um, not too excited about it. it it's cool. I, it, the, the only thing I'll say is I'm, I'm glad you know, steps are moving forward. People are still making things and that, that VR, you know, isn't, um, you know, people aren't saying, hey, we, we can't afford to make a headset or we shouldn't make a headset because there's no market for it. Um, anyone that makes hardware is my friend, even if I don't like yeah. it. I mean, I, it's it's designed for the Chinese market because see here in, in China, like Facebook is like verboten, right? Like China don't like Facebook. So yep. you don't have no Oculus in China. No, no Oculus for you. Um, okay, so getting to stuff that happened yesterday. So Saturdays, normally, not a lot of news on Saturdays, but we actually had quite a bit of news. So one of the things I was talking about yesterday, Red Matter, it's available right now. It was actually available yesterday um, on Steam. We, we had heard previously that Red Matter was coming to Steam. And it is available. I believe it's twenty four ninety nine is the regular price, but I think it has like a little ten percent discount. So you know, twenty two bucks or whatever for Red Matter. Uh, were you a big fan of Red Matter on Oculus? I thought it was pretty good. I never went back to complete it, um, but but yeah, I would say I'm a fan. Uh, I, I, I like the graphic aesthetic. I like. Um, I like the accessibility. There's a puzzle game, but the puzzles weren't too hard. Uh, the performance was really good. I, uh, you know, the developer seems to know what they're doing in, in that realm. So yeah, I would say I'm a fan of Red Matter, uh, even though I haven't completed it yet. And I, I think that speaks more to what I'm doing, playing all these games and all that, than than it does about the game. If if I wasn't podcasting and, and reviewing a bunch of games and you know, getting a bunch of headsets and stuff, like I, I would have beat and completed Red Matter. It's pretty rare that I've completed a game that Steve hasn't. I've actually completed Red Matter, so I got one on Steve. Yeah, I'm a fan of this because, you know, when I had my uh, my uh, my 970, here's a game graphics 
perfect. I mean, crystal clear, really good graphics, really good sound, and it, run, it ran smooth as can be, and that was back on my 970. It just worked great. I'm assuming the Steam version is very similar. Okay, um, another thing I mentioned, you know, From Other Sons is having a free weekend, although today is the last day, so if you want to try to jump in there and check that out, you can. Zero Caliber officially released, and it's priced at 25 bucks, but it also has that little launch discount, so it's like 22 50 or whatever it is. Um, any thoughts on Zero Caliber, like playing that demo and everything? Do you have any... Uh, excitement to try to grab that full game or i mean there's so many different games like this right war dust and all these other ones that's where i'm at i, I i'm personally not going to pick up zero caliber um the dev may send us a key or something but like i i have reached saturation with with these uh online vr shooters and um i just i don't really have room in 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 my diet of vr content to to add more to it so um for me it's going to be a pass but that's really not to speak anything bad i think the game has tons of potential and i think um if you are a person that that feast on only online shooting vr games then then you should add this to your arsenal of of content no question did you ever play firewall zero hour i couldn't remember if you played that or not yeah you did okay did you end up like selling it or or I, I did you get a physical copy i don't know or did you get the no digital? i got it i got it digital okay uh, did you play it very i mean did you like play it for a while and you never go back to it kind of thing or i, I probably put uh four or five hours into it so yeah for me i played it a lot um but you know is it did i get my money's worth probably not um but again it, it's like with red matter it goes back more to that we're just playing so much and stuff that we um that i, I don't have the time like i could see myself having firewall zero be in my regular rotation in fact if i wanted to play a um, online shooter my top choices are firewall zero hour and pavlov okay well why don't we move now to the big uh, the big Steam VR or the big Valve secret mystery HMD kerfuffle. We just had the Oculus kerfuffle, uh, you know, a few weeks back here. And so I've got on the screen all these different images from this mystery HMD. And I talked about it extensively yesterday. I mean, that was pretty much my entire show yesterday was all about this. But I don't have Steve's thoughts on it. So, Steve, I'll just kind of wrap up what we saw here. So, basically, we've seen like four or I think four pictures, basically, is what we had. Four pictures, high-resolution pictures of what appears to be um, an area where its malfunctioning headsets are set. And we see pictures of like eight headsets lined up, four headsets lined up. You can see that... There's two cameras on the bottom. We're not sure exactly what that's about. There's a strange thing in the middle that you can possibly snap something into. The lenses look a lot bigger than your typical uh, HMD lenses would be with that size of a headset. So it seems to suggest a bigger FOV. Um, and then, of course, there's these really big headphone style things that are on the side of each of these headsets. And the foam... The foam padding in the back seems absolutely identical to the foam padding that is on the Knuckles EV3. So everybody saw all of this stuff, and it's like, oh my god, megaton announcement. There is a brand new Steam VR headset. Valve is making their own headset. Oh my god, what is going on here? So Steve, I mean, you, when you first saw this, like, what were your reactions to all of this? Well, um, you know, I mean, when I first saw it, it was like, holy crap. Like, um, and then once I paid attention to it a little bit, I was uh, subdued a little bit, right? Like, this, first of all, it's it's completely legit. This is not a fabricated leak. This isn't someone who just, you know, took an HTC Vive and, and Photoshopped a circuit board on the front of it. And, you know, this these these headsets are assembled and they're somewhere, or at least they were back in July. Um so uh it's legit to the extent that that multiple headsets these prototypes that they are have been made uh i want to tamper everyone's hype and enthusiasm well hype at least maybe not enthusiasm to say that um 
this this isn't an announced product. Valve hasn't come out and said, "Hey, we we have an HMD that you're going to be able to buy it in 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 spring of 2019 or something." Um, I want to remind everybody that we've seen a more finished product product from LG, uh, and to to this day, it's never been released. So um, we don't know what. To what extent that this product is done, we don't know to what extent that Valve is planning to actually release it. Um, you know, it's still very early in that sense. Now, that being said, I do expect Valve to release, I, I, they've really gone this far. I do expect them to release this headset. I do expect it to exist. Um, but I, I, I just, I don't want to get too overexcited and assume that I'm going to be using this headset in the anytime in the relative near future. About the leak um, itself, yeah. go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say about the leak itself, the one thing that I really, really like is the big lenses. Now, uh, having spent time in the Odyssey Plus and going back and forth and paying a lot of attention to the minuscule details, um, the bigger the lens, the better, in my opinion. And that's not just for a field of view issue. The bigger the lens, the, the in theory, the bigger the sweet spot pr is probably going to be. Um, the 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 less you're going to have edge distortion. Like if you're making a if if anybody on this this live stream is is making a VR headset. Get the biggest damn lenses you can get in there. Um, big, big fan of that. Um, downside is I saw the uh, Fresnel grooves. Uh, I am over Fresnel grooves. Um, it has been something that's been popping back up uh, again for me with the Odyssey Plus. Uh, prior to picking up the Odyssey Plus, I had a Vive, a Go, and a PlayStation VR. All of which, it coincidentally, do not have groove or obvious grooves in the Fresnel, uh, or the, the lenses don't have Fresnel at all, and it, it just sucks seeing them again. Uh, we got to get away from from these these grooves, and honestly, um, Valve or, or whomever they need to uh, reverse engineer. Uh, some of Oculus's lenses from the Go, or, or borrow something from PlayStation VR. We, we need to mimic those people who are, who are doing better with the lenses. Um, one thing I was reading on Reddit is the um, the display board that is at least shown in these images may not support um, a, a high enough resolution. So we have a, a sort of a, a conflict between some of these leaks. Upload says they have a source. And then I think, is it the Valve News Network? News or, Network, yeah. Yeah, they claim to have a source. And I'm reading, and, and again, I'm just piecing everything together. I, I don't have a source myself. But there's information out there suggesting that one source is saying that this headset is 135-degree field of view uh, at a um, Vive Pro ish resolution. Another headset or another source is saying 150 degree field of view. Um, we need to the 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 big issue there is um, is having enough GPU to drive the headset without taking a step down in pixel density uh, from the existing Vive or the existing uh, Vive Pro even. If the field of view gets too big, but they keep the resolution the same, for example, as a Vive Pro, then we're going to have a reduction in pixels per degree, a reduction in angular resolution. And and that will actually be a lower fidelity image that you're seeing. So uh, I actually hope both of those rumors aren't or both of those sources are wrong and and that they got their wires crossed somewhere, um, you know. We'll have to see where that goes, but but all in all, to to sum it up, like I'm very excited. Um, you know, probably not going to touch on everything today. Maybe maybe we can, but uh, the headphones are being theorized that they may have some sort of uh, tactile haptics in them. Uh, so you know, maybe if you get punched in the side of your head or something, you you'll feel something. Uh, that could be pretty cool and, and pretty unique uh, to to this headset. So. Um, and then, so I guess, sort of attached to this leak is uh, this expectation that there is a Half-Life uh, exclusive VR game. Uh, and I don't think it's Half-Life Three, but um, you know, people are saying a, a Half-Life prequel. Or I will um, also say that uh, I am Rut says Steve sounds like he's presenting to a board of directors. I don't normally <laughs> present to the board, so uh, it's good to know that whenever I do, uh, my shit will be in row. Um, but the um, forgot i was saying until he interrupted me with his words um <laughs> the the uh the game like um i don't think it's going to be half-life 3 uh i almost wonder wait if a minute wait a minute 
Upload VR is like saying straight up, this is a prequel to Half-Life. Th this is a Half-Life, Half-Life 2 VR prequel or something like, like they're, that's on the Upload VR website. You go to Upload VR, it says Half-Life 2. Like it's confirmed, right? No, no, no but I it's think, funny. I think, I think it's very plausible that we have a Half-Life VR game, whether it be some standalone prequel uh, which I think that would be super cool. I don't think it's going to be Half-Life 3, which is which is my point. Um, I also think it's possible, like, we haven't heard squat out of that Half-Life 2 VR mod. We know that Valve greenlit it or whatever that means. Like, I, I don't track all that stuff too closely. But I almost wonder if Valve kind of just stepped in with those guys and have, have kind of helped develop that and and that that might be what releases with this headset. Uh, I do think that they will try to bundle... Uh, something Half-Life with this. I, I think there's there's strong enough rumors to suggest that, but um, you know, and I, and also I don't see them saying it's exclusive to this headset only. Like um, I, I imagine that would start like you know Steam VR fan meltdown if 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 Half-Life, whatever the Half-Life game is, was exclusive to this headset and and those with their vibes couldn't play it. I I I, I almost wish that happens just so I can see the meltdown. <laughs> well. I think it's going to like whatever these three valve games, they're going to be exclusive to VR. I, I don't think there's going to be a flat version because see valve is all about like, they're trying to, you know, Gabe talked about Nintendo and they talked about making super Mario 64 and they were like making the Nintendo 64 and super Mario 64 and the controller all at the same time. And I don't think they're going to, I don't think they would make a game that would be able to work in flat at all. No, no. Like, what I'm saying, this Half-Life game being exclusive to this headset, as in you couldn't oh. play it on your Vive. Like some people are thinking that that's a possibility. And and what I'm saying is I don't see that. Like I, I, I could only imagine the meltdown from all the Vive and Vive Pro and, and to a degree, the Rift owners, although they couldn't complain too hard um, that they couldn't play a Valve Half-Life game made for VR. Like, like that would just be the biggest meltdown ever. And that's why I said, I like, almost want to see that happen just, just for the entertainment value of it. Yeah. Hey, Simon Jones is saying, Steve, which project, which product is going to be in your hands first, the Pimax 5K Plus or a new HMD from Valve? The, the fact that I can't answer that with any degree of confidence speaks a lot about how I feel, uh, how quick I'm going to get my Pimax. Um, I, I, I don't think, uh, I initially said I might get it February. I'm, I'm now thinking April, um, which it's fine. You know, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm in line for one. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but what do you think about like one of the things Upload VR I think was kind of uh, insinuating is that there's going to be a bundle that you're, you're going to have this headset, you're going to have the Knuckles controllers, you're going to have the 2.0 base station, and you're going to have a physical copy. <laughs> you're going to have a, a code probably for Half Life Two, the prequel. Yeah, and 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 that's cool. Like I've I've been saying for a long time, I don't understand why Knuckles aren't out there. Like they've been finished enough. Like the EV two to EV three changes were so subtle. Like they didn't have to like send those out and make any noise about how subtle it was. The EV one to EV two change that was pretty substantial. Uh, but the EV two looked pretty done. Um, that gives me pause here, and, and that's kind of why I wanted to tamper hype on this headset, is because if they play uh, a sort of, of development cycle with this headset as they've done with Knuckles, um, this is a 2020-2021 product and not a 2019 product. So um, I'm hoping it's wrong. I'm hoping that Valve are somehow different with with this, this HMD and that they are going to announce it soon and release it relatively shortly after that. And to fuel the speculation, and let's be clear that this is all speculation. I don't have a source at Valve. I myself am not a contractor for Valve. Uh, Anthony isn't either. Gary, Chris, none of us are on the inside, right? So this is all speculation. We're responding to what we're seeing out in the news and, and in the VR community. But I wonder, while with, with my speculative hat on, I'm wondering if this didn't in some way influence oculus's slash facebook's recent decisions uh with you know if this headset is on the horizon from valve did oculus somehow become aware of it you know because they're going to have inner industry contacts and did they somehow become aware of it and say 
oh, we need to get a product out next year to compete with this. Um, Because otherwise, a Valve HMD in 2019 is going to be very advantageous over a 2016 Oculus Rift. So I'm just just curious if uh, and you can give me your thoughts on it. Did did any of this being in existence, this Valve HMD somehow influence Oculus, do you think? So that kerfuffle and this kerfuffle, they combined. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's an, I've never thought of it from that angle. But you know what? I have a question for you, Steve. But before we get to that question, I just want to ask everybody, if you're watching this right now, um, take a pause for a second and hit that like button. And also go ahead and subscribe. If you're watching this on VR365, go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We absolutely appreciate it. And if you're watching this on VR Roundtable, same exact thing, man. Tickle that like button. Subscribe. I got to do this more. I have a producer, <laughs> Steve. I have this like producer guy in the background that's helping me out, Jim Hall. And he's like, you got to do some of this stuff, Anthony. You got to keep keep reminding these people, you know, so I got to start doing this. But OK, so the question I wanted to get to you. So everybody's hit the like button, right? And everybody's subscribed. OK, now we can move forward. The question I have for Steve is. What the hell is the opening on the front? You got there. There's like five different possibilities, right? There's leap motion is a possibility. Um, it could be a battery is a possibility. It could be some kind of upgrade path. Like, what if this is a hybrid, uh, a standalone hybrid uh, PC VR headset slash standalone, and you could upgrade the the chip. You know, you could add a new Snapdragon to the front of it. Uh, what could that thing be? Or maybe it's none of the above, and maybe this is just a development thing that happens to have a thing on the front of it that has nothing to do with anything. What are your thoughts on that strange opening? That opening looks like it's very convenient to get to that uh, printed circuit board. And like without knowing anything, like it could be any of those things you mentioned, and that would be cool. I'm least inclined to think it has anything to do with leap motion, um, but it, it could be any of those. My thought is that this is a prototype that they're using in in their facilities and they're testing and they're making changes that that opening could just be a way for them to get to that daughter board and swap it out. And as they upgrade the board, right, without having to take the whole headset apart that way, like that, that would be my guess just from a, uh, a nerdy engineering with a manufacturing background sort of take on it. I'm, I'm going to go with nothing that we care about, that it's just the prototype. Cyan VR says the opening is for smell a vision and uh, Conrad Lawrence says it's for the rumble pack. And you know, what's really hilarious on the, on the Vive subreddit where they, everybody was talking about this. This one guy said, that's where the game cartridges go. <laughs> that's where the game cartridges snap in. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. I thought, yeah, that's if it was Nintendo, I wouldn't put it past him. The game cartridges snap right in there. Um, and I had this crazy wild theory that it's going to be an LCD screen so that people can see your eyeballs from the outside. How about that one? <laughs> that would be cool, actually. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. OK, um, well, do you want to move away now from uh, this mystery HMD? And uh, we could talk a little Project Cars, too, which I know that's something you've been sure. playing. I played it very briefly last night. Let me go ahead and grab my Project Cars 2 trailer since we're going to talk about that real quick. Uh, if I can find it here. Project Cars 2. Here we go. Okay. You know, it's weird. Every time I like start using my mouse or like going through any of my folders, sometimes our audio gets screwed up. I don't know if it's an NDI thing. Okay. So, Steve, so recently you were able to get Project Cars 2. It was on sale, a really good deal. And you've been playing this a little bit, so why don't you go ahead and give us our give us your thoughts? Well, I, I can't give anybody thoughts from a like a known racing sim person like that. That's not me. Um, I'm a I'm a VR fan. I like cars as much as the next guy. Uh, I used to own a BMW. Like I I know how to work on them to a degree. Like like I, you know that's the the mechanical side of me i guess um so i think i think it's cool but i'm not a i'm not a race car like i don't watch nascar or f1 i don't go to the races uh, although i have been so i want to say that like anything that i'm going to say about project cars is from the perspective of of a vr gamer um of all the racing games that i've tried uh a set of course project cars 1 project cars 2 um 
and and Drive Club on PlayStation VR, and also tried the hor- the horrible Gran Turismo on PlayStation VR. Um, what I was looking for in a racing game, like of of all of those games, um, up until playing Project Cars Two, which I know is a little bit old now. Um, Drive Club was my favorite because of friction. I could plug in my Logitech and throw the headset on and I could just play. And, um, you know, when, when I would try on PC VR, like, like particularly with Assetto Corsa, like there was like, you have to get out of the headset and then go back in. And, and like, it was just a lot of work just to, just to race a car. Um, Project Cars 2, uh, when I, when I tried it uh, last week, it was on sale for 20 bucks. Um, so I, I thought that was a good price. When I tried it, it was like Drive Club in terms of friction, but for PlayStation or but for PC VR. And, you know, so I had the advantages of the higher resolution. I had the advantages of my computer that just had higher fidelity than the PlayStation does. Um, and I could just stay in VR and I could race after race after race. Um, and I, I just thought the execution was real good. Um, also, I, you know, because, again, I, I keep talking about this Odyssey Plus that I've been testing out is I think on the Odyssey Plus, this looks really good. And um, it, it it just kind of motivated me to, to play it a lot. And um, I think uh, Project Cars 2 runs, from a performance perspective, runs surprisingly better than I would have anticipated. Um, I hear a lot about the people who play uh, racing sims a lot, and they really, really get deep into that rabbit hole. And they talk a lot about how performance isn't very good like uh not not about project cars but you know games where they have to reduce the number of of cars on the track because the hardware isn't there to support it um i found with project cars 2 keeping everything sort of default on the samsung odyssey plus on a 1080 ti that i could run it at 250 percent super sampling in steam vr and it held 90 frames all day uh to me that caught me by surprise because i was expecting a lot of performance issues from a high fidelity racer uh and and i didn't have any performance issues it was butter smooth and um for that i thought it was awesome no friction you can race it's butter smooth and they have some point to point tracks and what i mean by a point to point track is you you have the tracks where it's a it's a you know like indianapolis motor speedway it's a loop you know you're going around you do laps um but drive club was really good about having where you you, you drive the coastline and you, you're not doing laps you know it's a scenic route and project cars although they have mostly tracks um, they have a few point to point uh, races that you can do, and, and and I really like those a lot as well. So um, Project Cars, in terms of its VR execution, uh, really surprised me, and I recommend it. Okay. Um, a question, though. So I got into this last night as well. Now, I only played this for maybe 25 minutes. I tried two different cars, and I was on two different tracks, and I was racing around, but and I liked it. I, it was good. Everything, everything that you say, I, I can kind of echo all those sentiments. But one of the things I did notice, like I did notice screen door. I didn't have my super sampling cranked quite like you you had yours. Um, but I did notice quite a bit of screen door effect. And, and I, as I was driving along these tracks, I was actually thinking of you and your Odyssey Plus. And I was like, man, I wonder if this, this could be one of the few games where you really would want to have an Odyssey Plus. Like, is that, like, is there any kind of thoughts along those lines? Because I know ultimately you're kind of disappointed with the Odyssey Plus overall. Like, you, you've you kind of said that, that maybe, yeah. you know, you could let it go pretty much. But would this be maybe one of the few games where it would be a bonus to have an Odyssey Plus for a game like this? Yeah, and, but I, so, um, I with I ordered an OG Odyssey, uh, and I'm pretty sure I, I like what Windows MR is doing enough. I like I like having the seated the higher resolution. So I've decided that I was probably going to keep the Odyssey Plus, but I was still the softness of the uh, anti SDE filter. Like it, it's it's a very hit and miss. Like in one moment you'll be like, man, this looks awesome. And then on another moment, you'd be like, ah, I don't like this. I'd rather have the more crisp visuals. So to help me um, sort of get comfortable in the skin of of keeping that headset, um, I ordered an OG Odyssey from Amazon um, that has a nice long return window. And I'm going to keep one of the two. So I'm not gaming anything per se. Um, But I... 
to be comfortable, I have to know. I have to compare it to the OG Odyssey, and I ultimately have to decide. Because some of what I'm seeing with the Odyssey Plus is just the increased resolution over the Rift anyway. And and some of what I'm seeing is the oh the 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 better um, vibrant like you know the rift is sort of subdued in in its brightness and in its color saturations. So um, you know some of that all that is is what I'm getting with the Odyssey Plus over the rift. So I, I feel like doing an OG Odyssey and an Odyssey Plus comparison will really help me decide uh, and kind of filter out the noise uh, on the anti SDE. So uh, I should actually get that headset delivered today. Uh, Amazon is the awesome Sunday deliveries. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be on next week. I'll, I'll have more comments on the Odyssey plus relative to the OG Odyssey. Uh, and I'm going to keep calling it OG because, um, OG is just cool. And, um, you know, I'll be able to, you know, I know a lot of people were curious about, you know, how does it compare, um, to the to the original odyssey or to a vive pro and and i'll be able to make that comparison and you know project cars is going to be probably one of the key games i make that screen comparison with um because it's so easy to get in and out of i can swap those headsets real quick i don't have to worry about tracking i don't have to like it, it'll, it'll just be nice in that in that way so um stay tuned you know since getting your odyssey plus have you set that headset down for like a day or two and been back in your rift for a day or two. Cause I'm just wondering, like, it's funny. Cause we did that one episode where, you know, it, it was the live Q and a and all that, where you're talking about the odyssey plus. And I don't know why, but ever since that episode, every VR game that I've played since then, I see this screen door like crazy. And I'm like, what is going on here? I only talked about screen door for one day and now all I can see is a screen door. And I'm just wondering, like, if you went back to your Rift, is it like, wow, look at this screen door? So uh, first of all, like, remember that the Rift is actually much better in the Vive when it comes to screen door. Um, so like the Vive, not the Vive Pro. Um, I forcibly couldn't play my Rift because I was doing the whole RMA thing for three days. Um, and for, I think, two days before sending it off, I didn't use my Rift. So I at least went five, six days, maybe even longer without touching my rift. And, um, yeah, like as soon as I get in my rift, I actually feel the resolution more than I thought. Um, I, I, I obviously noticed the screen door. Uh, it's, it, it's very, it's very obvious. Um, but again, I'm dealing with the muted colors and the less brightness. So it's like, it's hard to take in all these variables and the changes to sort of see how that, that, that pans out. But, but yes, going back to the riff, it's very similar. It's not, it's not this huge, massive, like night and day, like I want to throw it in the trash difference. Um, but it's, it's, it's like going from an Oculus Go to an Oculus Riff. Like when you put the Go on, you don't necessarily notice it, but when you step back to the rift, you notice it. And I would say it stands out even more than than going to PlayStation VR. With a PlayStation VR, I guess for owning it for the for the two years that I've owned it, like every time I put that headset on, I know what to expect, so I'm not surprised by anything. Um, whereas I haven't had that contrast necessarily on the on the PC VR side for for quite a while. So um, yeah, you, you you notice it going back to the Rift. To answer your question in a long roundabout way. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me of like when I got my Oculus Go and was using that for a while. And then you go back and you're like, wow, I'm really seeing a lot of God rays now, you know, because the Go does such a good job with the God rays. Um, I happen to have the wrench trailer on my screen right now. Did you happen to touch that demo at all? It was I didn't. Oh, you didn't get a chance. OK, I think it's kind of interesting from the standpoint that I don't know of another demo, you know, on the Oculus Rift like. This is the first demo I've ever seen on Oculus Rift because normally they don't have demos. What they do is they do, you know, they do the free weekend thing, kind of like From Other Sons is doing a free weekend right now. And I'm really hoping that maybe Oculus has figured something out here and that this is going to pave the way for more demos to come. I mean, I love the free weekends. It's great, but not every, not every developer or publisher is going to want to do a free weekend like that, depending on what type of game they have. Um, I'm not a car guy at all, but it is very clean and crisp and very well done. So you should probably check that out when you have 10 minutes one day. Yep. Um, anything else you want to bring up or any, any games you want to talk about or anything? Um, we got a little bit of time if you wanted to get um, into anything. Well, uh, did you have you talked about Eclipse for Go? No, no. Uh, did you get a chance to play that? Yep, yep. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw that trailer on. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, talk about that. Okay. Um, uh, so the, um, it, it, well, <laughs> I draw a blank <laughs> here uh, when you're live. Sometimes that happens, but uh, what's the full name of the game? <laughs> I just got uh, it. Eclipse, Eclipse Edge of Light. I think. All right. Yeah, I, Eclipse, I wanted to get that. Because I, I I just wrote a clip here on my side, uh, but Eclipse Edge of Light is a daydream game um, that came out last year, maybe a little more than a year ago, um, and they it, it was ported uh, to the to Gear VR and Oculus Go. Um, so all of us that that don't have Daydream uh, was able to play the game, and for a lot of people, it became one of the must have Oculus Go games. And uh, I was hearing a lot of hype all week about it, and um, was. You know, I didn't have a chance to play it. I was busy and I kept hearing a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people were putting up Let's Plays of it. And uh, I knew that I wanted to play the game because it was getting all this attention for a reason. Uh, having spent uh, about an hour with it, um, I, I would say that the attention it's gotten is warranted. Uh, it is pretty impressive for a mobile VR game. Um, it, it The controls, like, so, so it's a... a the best I can describe it is a sort of an adventure uh, game. Um, you, there's, I haven't seen any combat, so you're you're solving very light puzzles. But uh, I'd say more than anything, at least to this point that I've saw, is it's uh, more about navigating the environment. You you have this jet booster pack thing, um, but it's actually it's a it's a relatively complex game that somehow still is able to use the three degree of freedom oculus go controller you don't need a gamepad in fact i don't even think you can use a gamepad uh with this game so one of the concerns with with an oculus go or anything that's three degrees of freedom is that you know will you really be able to to use that controller in any kind of meaningful way in a game and and, and i still think it's a design constraint but i think the developer um has done pretty good with with that constraint and they pulled it off like the uh the controls work pretty well you um you push or you tap or i guess just touch on the touchpad and you can walk forward um you can move strafe left and right walk backward you click it in you have a a jetpack type thrust and uh navigating the environment is a is a challenge it's actually it's the biggest challenge that i've seen in the game all the puzzles and and, and i'll put that in air quotes uh are are pretty light like nothing has um has 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 really challenged me in, in that way um but it it it's a really good mobile game um you know if this was on computer or pc vr or even playstation vr um i would be less impressed like part of what i'm impressed here is is the fact that you can play it on the go um so uh it's it's definitely in my recommend list um how much is hey, it we got uh, a key it's for 10 it. bucks i think 10 bucks oh hell yeah for 10 bucks i definitely recommend it yeah, nine ninety nine, I believe that. Yeah, I was surprised by that price too. I think it, if you have an Oculus Go and you want to see what, like, uh, um, I mean, it's trying to be a big boy game. Basically, it's trying to give you a taste of what like an Oculus Rift game or an HTC Vive game, and it's not quite there. And I, Steve, did you ever own a PlayStation Vita at all? Yeah. Okay, so I had a PlayStation Vita very early in its life somehow. And I was playing like Hot Shots Golf on my PlayStation Vita. I was playing Wipeout 2049 or whatever the game was. I was playing uh, like the Uncharted game that was on the Vita. And I was playing all these games on my Vita. And, and I was thinking to myself, wow, this is almost like a PlayStation 3 in my hands. And, and so as I'm playing these games, I'm marveling at how close it is to PlayStation 3. But then at the same time, I'm noticing all the cracks and I'm noticing all the seams and I'm like, yeah, but it's not quite a PlayStation three game. You know what I mean? Yep. And I kind of, I kind of felt the same way when I was playing this game where if you don't, if you're not playing really close attention and you're just kind of walking around and looking at these worlds and you're hovering with your hover pack and you don't have any problems with the controls too much. And sometimes you even look at your arm, you know, and they do a pretty decent job of like inverse kinematics with that arm that comes out. Like it's usually in kind of the right place. And so it's like if you're not paying really close attention, you almost think 
this is almost like a rift or a vibe game, not a graphically intense one, but you know, almost. But then if you start looking at the bushes and you start looking at the textures that are on these like Canyon walls and stuff, if you start paying closer attention, you immediately notice, yeah, like you kept saying, it's a mobile game. It's a mobile game. It's a mobile game. And so you notice that mobile game factor, but when you were playing this at all, did you start to think of the Oculus Quest at all? Because see, this is a, <laughs> I think this is a Snapdragon 825, right? Yeah. And we're going to the Snapdragon 835. And were you thinking, God, I hope the Quest is quite a little bit better than this. But like, you know, it's kind of those mixed emotions, right? Well, I, to be clear, I'm not sure that it's a Snapdragon 825, but I, I, I am sure that it's not. The Go is not in a Snapdragon 835. It is a lower chip, uh, but I, I don't want to say something and be wrong. Um, that That's kind of my point, right? Like you, you just hit the nail on the head, like. It, it, as impressive as it was, like I can't fault the developer. They knocked it out of the park with the tool set that they were given. Um, and I think if you like playing games on the Oculus Go, like this is a game you should have in your library. That all being said, it again, it does feel like it, it never once lost the feeling that I was playing a mobile uh, VR game. And that is my concern in a bigger sense with the... Um, with the Oculus Quest, like I, I think the fidelity, and I think it'll be more impressive than than playing this game on an Oculus Go that was ported from originally from Daydream. Um, I think Oculus Quest will be no question um, higher fidelity than that, and and have deeper experiences. But the in the end, my my point still remains the same in the sense, and I think Carmack said it. You know, if we we, we just simply think of things as power. Um, you know, I, I have a 750 watt, I think, power supply in, in, in my desktop PC. That is just simply not going to translate to a five watt or whatever the battery in an Oculus Quest is going to be. Like, like what they, what the efficiencies that they, that they'll do and what they're able to squeeze that lemon and get as much out of it that they can will, will no doubt be very impressive. Um, but they can't. They can't cheat the laws of physics like, you know, it's still a low power device and it will remain a low power device so long as they are uh, have to rely on battery technology. So um, for that, I, I remain cautiously optimistic about mobile VR. Yeah, I, I think the real key with the Oculus Quest is going to be when we get the Oculus Quest and we're playing games. And and we look at a bush or we look at a um, the wall or something. Will how quickly are we going to notice the seams, or are you really going to have to go out of your way to notice the seams? And I think if you have to go out of your way to notice the seams and and the imperfections, basically the fact that you're not really on a on a on a high end PC type of thing, if you kind of have to go out of your way to notice that, I think the quest is going to be very successful, and I think even even semi-graphic cores are going to be able to deal with it. But if you can really easily notice the seams, it's going to be a little... And it's really going to come down to the developers and how they shade things, how they how they basically hide things and how they use the uh, the art style to kind of hide limitations. Like, you know, we play Dead and Buried or Drop Dead or whatever on our Oculus Go, and it's hard to notice much of a downgrade at all because of the way the, the visual aesthetic like does a great job of hiding things. Yeah, and uh, I feel the same way. Like, you, certain games will lend itself, like Ken, Blaze Rush, like all those are just kind of one-to-one -one on the Oculus Go. I imagine they'll even be closer to one-to-one -to -one on the uh, Oculus Quest. Um, and, and I think a game like Beat Saber, like Beat Saber to me is like, like it's a no-brainer for PlayStation VR and Turkey Day. It's a no-brainer to have Beat Saber on the Oculus Quest. And I, I assume it's one of those day one games that you'd be crazy for it not to be. Um, but, but all that, like, I think, I think some games will, will be seamless. There won't be the cracks. And again, Beat Saber will probably be one of those games. Um, but then at the same time, the games that I'm most hungry for and, and the, the content, whether it be gaming or not, the, you know, whether it's modeling something in three, in VR or art or whatever, like the things that require that horsepower is just simply cannot be done. Like we will not be able to have Fallout four on uh, oculus quest like uh, it would it just the the hardware isn't there and and that's okay i guess if if 
if, if you're well aware of that limitation. But it seems to me that if we're going to talk in any way about mainstream gaming uh, and what it means to be mainstream and all that, we talked about that last week, I think. But if we're going to talk about mainstream, the mainstream right now, uh, what's the latest game? You know, Tomb Raider, uh, Battlefield Five, Red Dead, Red Dead. Like, like that's that's the fidelity that I want to see in VR, and I just don't know how the Quest is going to do it. And I think that there's a large portion of potential consumers out there that want that. They want to play Battlefield Five or Red Dead, and I, Quest isn't going to get it there. Quest is going to be in the direction, and is why I keep calling it mobile. They're going to be for the for the kids that are playing Angry Birds and and people that want to play crap on on iPads. That's not me, and and I, and I think for most people watching this, that's probably not them. It'll be a nice alternative when you can't be at home and you can't be playing on your desktop. Um, but I don't think it's going to be something that you prefer to your desktop desktop constantly but as a as a, a vr gamer do you think you could possibly think about it in such a way where it's like okay if it's a fallout game i'm playing that on my pc if it's like a super hot beat saber winlands type game i'll play that on the quest like do you think level think okay, that's a PC game, that's a Quest game, and you kind of use both of them, and you're happy with both of them, but you know if you're going to play a Primordian-type game, you want to be on your PC rig, and if you're going to play something kind of super hot or, or Beat Saber-ish, you're going to be on your Quest. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, no, I think that, that's exactly how it would be. Like, I, I don't even play Ken on on my rift anymore there's there's no point i'd rather play it on my go at a higher resolution without a wire and stretched out on the couch that i don't have in this room so yeah i think i think that's going to be the extent of it but i look at it as a product that will augment pc vr at least for for as an enthusiast i don't see it as a like only option like if i was going to have only one vr headset the oculus quest would not be it like and and there are going to be consumers out there that inevitably the only headset they have is an Oculus Quest. And inevitably, the only thing they're going to be able to play with any meaningful accuracy, fidelity, is going to be the games that are suited for that. Like, they're, they're going to miss out. They're not going to play Project Cars 2 on an Oculus Quest unless we get some sort of PC streaming capability or, or you know, able to tether it to a PC in some way. Yeah, it's kind of like having like a Nintendo Switch or something. Like if you have a PS4 and a Switch, you know, you're going to play Red Dead on your PS4, you know, but you can play other stuff on your Switch. Um, I know you got a little bit of screaming going on there in the background. Kids running I around. can't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> I can't even no, hear it. <laughs> it's not a big deal. But um, I have on the screen, I mean, we're about to get out of here, but I have on the screen Transpose. Now, I know you didn't play a lot of this, but... I liked it, and and you weren't necessarily in love with it. I just thought maybe you could share some of your thoughts of your brief time with it. Um, well, you know, like um, it's exactly that. Like I, I, I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, it, and there wasn't anything in particular that, um, that. That, that I could point to as to why I didn't love it. Now I'm hearing the whichever kids crying. We have some some family that are that is visiting us. Um, so there's that. Uh, apologies for anyone hearing something in the stream. Um, but like it it looks good. Like it, it's it's good execution. I like the developer. Secret location. I, I, I've liked everything they've done. But when I went into this game to play it, it didn't. You know, there's there's some games that that are executed well that you you can look and you say okay this this game isn't a piece of crap it isn't something that someone churned out in in three hours and trying to make a quick buck like it's obviously that they they spent time on transpose and and and, and that it has good execution um but at the same time it doesn't grab you like you're not interested like you don't want to keep going you want to turn it off and go play something else and and that's what I felt like in Transpose. I can't look at anything and say this is what they've done wrong. Uh, I wish the game did this. I, you know, they should have zigged instead of zag. Like I can't say anything about this game. Like on paper, it's it's fine. Um, I guess I'm like Gary when it comes to Beat Saber. Like it just it's just not my bag. Like for whatever reasons, it didn't hook me. So. Um, I, I probably should keep my comments there because I don't want to put someone off because I'd say odds are, you know, you probably most people will like this game and, and, and I don't want to 
somehow negatively impact the game by saying it didn't hook me. Um, I don't mind to critique a game if it does something wrong. Hey, that design is crap or uh, the controls are broken or it looks bad. None of that's the case here with Transpose. It looks fine. It plays fine. It, controls are fine. Uh, I just, it's, it's not for me and I didn't put a ton of time into it uh, because it's not for me. Yeah, I know that for myself personally, one of my problems, or I mean, I you can kind of consider it to be a problem, is I have a habit of like falling in love with like sometimes just the visual look of a game and like the sound and stuff. It's like when I play Transpose, like I'm not going to get up on stage and say, oh my God, this has the best gameplay ever. You know, the gameplay is is decent, but for me, it's more just being in the world, the sound and kind of the Tron look of it and like looking at my robot looking body and stuff and and that kind of. Uh, but I know there's other gamers, they don't care about that. And so they get into transpose and they're like, this isn't that great. You know, so there's kind of a yin and the yang there. Um, anything else you wanted to cover before we bounce out of here? Or are we pretty much good? Oh, I think we're good. We can head out. OK. All right, so I guess that is going to go ahead and wrap it up. But you know what? Before we wrap it up, what do we need you guys to do? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tickle that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. Do all the wonderful things that we need you to do so that we continue to show up here as the months, weeks, and years go by. Um, but yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode of VR365 and also for VR episode, Roundtable. Episode oh, 103. Because <laughs> I don't know if you do the episode. It's episode 103, I believe. Maybe 104. You wanna, go ahead, do the, out, do the outro for VR Roundtable. Uh, that's <laughs> fine. We're, we're out. So subscribe, guys. Like We're on episode 100 and whatever. Like, you, you, you've been here before. Most of you probably already hit stop by now anyway. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.